In the ever-evolving landscape of technology, the allure of cutting-edge hardware often overshadows the hidden gems from yesteryears. Today, I invite you to embark on a journey with me of rediscovery as we delve into the formidable HP Z820 workstation, a machine that holds the key to unlocking unparalleled computing potential on a budget. Now picture this, a sleek, powerful HP Z820 workstation standing tall on a clean desk, ready to defy expectations. Now the tech enthusiast in you, I am certain, will believe that this particular machine has untapped potential, especially given the age of the hardware and our ability to extrapolate maximum performance in the modern day. Now the Z820 is no exception, age is not a limitation, but rather an invitation to redefine what is possible with this hardware. Now why the HP Z820 you may ask? Well allow me to make my case, and I'm sure you will find yourself captivated by the prospect of taking one of these and turning it into your own powerhouse. Stay tuned, grab some popcorn, let's uh, see what this machine has to offer. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content, and share if you find someone else may be of benefit of this particular machine. Do do you have an HP Z820? Post your specs up in the comments so people can see what sort of hardware still makes this machine great in the modern day. What is the ideal home server in 2024? Well, Racer Z Studios presents the HP Z820 Overview, featuring X79 Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge CPU architecture with DDR3 ECC regulated up to 1866 MHz. Now these are ideal for CAD workhorses, video editing, coding, or that NAS or file server. They were first released in 2012. You could equip them with a top spec E52697V2 CPU. And there's quite a lot of space for added hardware. It's got a C600 chipset. Decent number of USB ports, but you may want an expansion on USB 3. We've got dual NICs or NICs. Nice SUS controller as well as dual RJ45 one gigabit ethernet ports and a standard power socket. Now one thing to be aware of is there are two motherboards, the V1 and the V2. The V1 only supports the more dated Xeon V1s, the V2 motherboard supports up to the V2 Xeons. Two power supply options, definitely aim for the higher powered ones so you have more flexibility on upgrades. There are some performance coolers like the water cooler and I do believe the Z cooler from the 840 also fits. Now dual CPU configuration, this will be the most powerful system you can get but there are other really powerful CPUs. Now for the V1 systems, check out the motherboard designations. This is as fast as you could possibly go in the modern day. These are pretty affordable but a choice between 8 and 6 core more or less. There are lots of others but these are the top spec ones. In terms of performance, we're looking at around 3.8 gigahertz boost and somewhere around 2 or 3 gigahertz base, which isn't too bad. 150 watt, maybe 135 watt, somewhere in that ballpark. It's a little bit heavy on the power draw, but these are going to be able to handle multiple different virtual machines with an absolute smile. Decent amount of cache there as well. Take note, they are absolutely end of service, released way, way back. Memory wise, the V1, motherboard, and CPUs can only support up to 1600 megahertz DDR3. ECC. Sounds like a flaw or a weakness, but it's not. That means it's going to be really cheap and affordable for you to obtain. Temperature ranges there and the socket LGA 2011. Now definitely worth specking these out. Take note, being dated CPUs, there may be some functionalities that have dropped off. So definitely go through, make sure everything that you require from your machine is present. Let's also check out these V2 CPUs. These are the Ivy Bridge, a little bit more powerful, still fairly good in the modern day. So we'll scan through again arranging them from most powerful starting off with a 12 core option there the 2697 v2 the 87w tends to be a little bit more power hungry keep that in mind and something like the 2667 v2 is also pretty good look at that four gigahertz on boost that's ample for modern day 130 watts give or take pretty pretty solid now another great option on these will be the fact that you are able to run dual cpus on these system got ample memory dual cpu and keynote for the v2s we can run 1866 megahertz a little bit faster 1800 getting us into uh, nearly the modern day ddr4 just falling short definitely keep an eye on the temperature ranges for these especially for that 2687w v2 that does need a bit of a performance cooler and likely the 97 v2 as well so keep that in mind same deal here definitely check all the added specifications to make sure that your 
end desire use is all there but generally that's not going to be too big of a deal for a home server now what does this machine look like well it's got a tri-chamber design actually created with the help of bmw we have the pci chamber we have the nice cpu chamber and up top a dedicated psu chamber quickly have a peek through start at the bottom of the machine the pcie chamber which also flows into the hard drive chamber there it is now one key consideration straight away this nice little plastic cover although a great concept is really only suitable to those quadro gpus from the era appropriate time if you fit any modern gpu that particular unit will not fit but at least we can still clamp them and very very straightforward here key consideration again the motherboard designation that is the sticker we want to check and make sure you get the v2 motherboards We've got a cmos battery and while we're here let's check out these pcie lanes slot one slot two slot three slot four pretty decent number of x16s here and right down the bottom take note we also have a rather dated pci slot in case you need that as well we have the c600 chipset can this boot off an nvme that's the thing we want to know no unfortunately not unless you use a plx based pcie adapter that will allow it but otherwise no we cannot do i did try and boot from an nvme but it never worked take note no bifurcation in the bios now another key consideration these particular boards do not have any protection on the pci region so when you are inserting these brackets be very careful because they do have a tendency to chip in there and that's probably why these machines end up in the recycling bin so be very careful they updated that on the z840 i will add so nice update hard drive base that's looking pretty tidy a few spider webs nothing major now in terms of the front io and i guess we're getting to the cpu region very shortly as well should we have a quick peek now if we remove one of the cpu coolers to give us a look see to see what's cooking in there but take note we do have a sus controller dedicated on the motherboard which is exactly what you want for your home server as well as the c600 patchberg chipset which is really handy for handling many different drives i believe up to 14 ports now this is our nice cpu cooling module this is a little complicated lots of fans there four and two two for the cpu that is the power connector there where it does receive all of its power to keep those things running there are some brackets to keep an eye out for that's where it's going to clip in and it's a slightly different design from the z840 but very similar and keep an eye on these cables here they do have a tendency to pinch a little bit so you may want to do some cable management in terms of our three 5.25 inch bays this is going to give you ample storage for expansion you could take a very nice adapter very easy to get in there as well with the front cover a couple of screws on both sides and you're off going i'll show you that later as well now in terms of front io a little blurry let's take a different angle much better we do have firewire microphone and audio two usb 3.0s one usb one and you can expand so this is a particular expansion that i have on this machine very useful usb 3.0 but if i had to choose something i'd probably go with this look at that six sata ports hot swap very cool oh wow is that that's a for locust phalangiodes oh my goodness oh wait what's going on okay sorry sorry we don't mean to disturb you uh okay this is kind of awkward tell you what make a deal a peaceful agreement was reached uh, something about not paying rent on time anyway going through we have four hard drive bays they are sus truly hot swap between sus and sata how great is that but definitely reserve those for the 3.5s lots of pci slots for upgrades you could absolutely stock that up top upgrade probably a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter definitely want to look into some good cpus that particular one is the e52690 v1 it's the best cpu you can more or less run on this rather aged machine now with the v1 motherboard two dual fans definite bonus to get some nice airflow through that cpu area should we have a look at the power supply maybe this will be too expensive to run as a server it's got a fairly powerful power supply this particular unit sitting at 1125 watt maximum we do have three of those six pin power cables each outputting 12 volt at 18 amps that gives us an incredible 216 watts per cable so if you did want to run a modern gpu you could totally do that a little bit more than an us maybe sounds like a gaming array now the psu is absolutely a proprietary unit you'll see the power connectors at the back take note they do sometimes dislodge and there's a little speaker that's looking rather biological in there hmm, strange a little bit of dust but yeah we'll definitely clean that off in a quick cleaning 
Okay, now in terms of getting the rear panel off, it's a little bit tricky, and yes, take note, subscribe for future content. We're gonna do a similar video for the Z840, the HP Z8, and probably the Z800 if you wanna see it. Oh, this is a little bit loose. It's okay, we'll attach that. Remind me later to take a screwdriver to it and refit that bracket. But here it is. This is the rear panel of our machine. Uh, 10 out of 10 for cable management. That's super tidy. Now, one key consideration of the back here, these little adapter connectors here can sometimes dislodge they can break, so keep in mind you may have to replace these if your machine per se doesn't have the ability to detect your hard drives that you fit. And I think this particular one has exactly that problem. I might have to replace a couple. But that's no major. Very, very nice cable management. We can see the connectors to the upper chamber there, which is looking really, really good. Now, take note, we also have the motherboard standoffs coming through here. Not that you'd ever have to remove it, but it's actually really easy to remove. And there are some other plastic bits, but I don't think we'd ever have to actually remove those. So that's looking pretty tidy. A couple of screws up front here. We'll quickly grab those and get the front panel off. I'm sure you're curious to see how that works. That's pretty straightforward. So screw up top, screw at the back. There are some on the other side as well. And then the front face here comes off there it is pretty well designed uh, very nice looking piece here with a little bit of aluminium here and there there it is definitely keep an eye on that one but there's our front io massive three 5.25 inch base you don't see this on a lot of computers that does open some doors now we'll point out that's actually been painted black which is really cool they didn't do that on the Z800. Pretty cool to see. A little bit of uh, visual improvement. Bit dated on the USB front. You may want one of these expansion docks. It's really handy. We do expand and get a little bit more modern connections as well as uh, options for expansion. But very, very important when you're taking this apart, definitely consider upgrading these bays to get yourself some more storage. Pretty solid handle on these as well. You can see the mounting mechanism there. Now, while I clamp that back together and re-screw, oh, probably should refit the upper handle before we do all of this. So keep that in mind. We'll pinch it back a little bit here. It shouldn't break. It's pretty sturdy in construction. And there it is, all done. It's reassembled. Well, that wasn't too bad. And handle test, okay. Think the handles are okay so I'll quickly reattach these a uh, little bit of wear and tear the machines are getting old now that comes part of the territory but i'm going to sell this one on so i may just as well repair it while we're here okay that just slots back in very easy a little bit of a tug make sure it's well aligned at the front otherwise it may not make it and while we're on the front side panel should we say or the front panel there are some cool details there like key regions on the motherboard that you will need to be aware of so if there are any ports you're looking for there's a nice diagram to decode all of them including subtle things like the PCI slots. And we also have nice dedicated guides for single and dual processor allocations of memory. Well, we made it through, you're doing well. Ideal uses, you can use this for pretty much anything, but here is my model. I'm gonna say ZA20 on no budget or budget 100% removed. This is the ZA20 to its absolute peak performance. I would take a V2 motherboard, maybe around 128 gigabyte, you don't really need more, of DDR3 1800, 1866 megahertz ECC memory. I would throw in two of those E52687Ws, the V2s. I would also throw in maybe some of the Z coolers. I have seen people claim that they can fit the Z coolers from the Z840 on this machine. That would be a nice upgrade. I'd also throw in maybe three of those six bay SSD 5.25 inch bays. Three of those would allow us to run, we could run many, many SSDs, up to 18 SSDs. Now I've priced up nine, but yeah, you could definitely run more, but there is a, a little hazard here. We don't have enough SATA ports in this case, unless we get an expansion card. Now I've also included something like four Seagate Exos X20 20 terabyte hard drives. Uh, just a nice little upgrade and maybe two of those four terabyte crucial P3s. NVMEs, can't boot from them, but we can use them as like a storage library, which is really cool. And throw in a 10 gigabit network card that would be the dream machine what's it worth <coughs> four thousand dollars <coughs> four thousand uh, dollars a very a very small sum of money so you could empty your bank account and get yourself the uh, most extreme hardware possible but the reality is we don't need anything like this the machine itself worth maybe 170 on amazon uh, sometimes more sometimes less so definitely keep this one in mind could be a nice little machine now what can we look forward to in future content well we're going to see equivalent videos for the hpz 840 a yeah, full tear down we want to see what these things are made of what makes them tick what are the ideal specifications we're also going to look at the hp z8 g4 full rundown breaking this machine down to show us what is good bang for buck stay tuned for future videos hopefully you enjoyed that one i'll see you on the next one have a good day